Today, brothers and sisters, we celebrate the Feast of St. Andrew. He is considered the first called. Now, it sounds odd that we might say that, since in today's Gospel we hear Matthew's version of the call of St. Andrew, that it happened alongside the call of Peter and Andrew and James and John. But in John's Gospel, we hear that Andrew and another disciple who's unnamed are following after John the Baptist. And then John the Baptist points out Jesus as the Lamb of God who takes away the sins of the world. And from that moment, those two disciples then begin to follow Jesus. So we know that Andrew was one of them. And the other unnamed disciple was most likely John, the brother of James. So Peter and James, who leave their nets along with Andrew and John, don't do so on their own. They don't do so just out of the blue. They have somebody who has given them a testimony first. Because Andrew and John, they went and they saw where Jesus was, and they began to experience something greater. And so they, their hearts were stirred up to begin to believe in Jesus. So when Jesus called them, they were able to respond. And we hear this kind of action, this kind of necessity of spreading the word in the first reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Romans. It says quite clearly, how can they call on him in whom they have not believed? And how can they believe in him of whom they have not heard? And how can they hear without someone to preach? And how can people preach unless they are sent? The entire idea of being an apostle means to be sent, a sent one, one who is commissioned, sent on a mission. And brothers and sisters, when we look at the life of St. Andrew, we see that he was an intimate companion of Jesus And you might say, well, Father, so were all the other apostles. That's not the case. You see, because when Jesus calls people, there are some who are quicker to respond to the Lord and quicker to allow the Lord to touch their hearts than others. So we hear about an intimacy that Jesus shares with Peter, James, and John. And then other times, Andrew is included in, in like a circle of four. Now, it doesn't mean that the Lord has favorites. If he does, the good news is this. He's God, and so he's able to have unlimited favorites. But what it means is this, that there are certain people who will respond quicker to the Lord, to say yes to the Lord. So we want to look at the example of St. Andrew today as a reminder that we have a choice as to what we're going to do. We can just sit there and say, okay, Lord, you know, whenever you want, here I am. Or we can say, Lord, I want the kind of intimacy that Andrew had and more. Lord, Would you show me how to walk as one of your intimate friends? But besides that, though not all of us are called to follow in the office of apostle, that would be the bishops, right? Yes? Or Catholics? Okay, yes. Good. Though not all of us are called to that role, we are certainly able to follow St. Andrew by his example of preaching the gospel, and I don't mean just simply saying to people, yeah, I go to church, if we even say that, but rather being willing to tell people about Jesus, because let's face it, brothers and sisters, we now live in a day and age where people either have never heard of who Jesus is, you think that that's odd with Google, but it's true, that there are people who have either never heard of Jesus Or, if they believe anything about Jesus, they believe what the world is telling them about Jesus, that he was just a holy man who happened to be a spiritual leader. And that's it. Not Jesus, the Son of God, to whom we are called 
to hand over our entire lives and therefore to become his disciples and therefore to enter into the blessings of intimacy with God the Father, to know the Holy Spirit, and to enjoy now and into eternity life everlasting. So if we're not willing to talk about Jesus, we might as well go home. Because the church is not built only on people coming to church. The church is built on the witness that we can give to others, where we say, you know, sometimes I've struggled with my prayer life, but I remember this time when I had this difficulty, I brought it to God, and he answered my prayer. Hey, maybe he can do that for you too. Because a what if can be more powerful than a declarative statement. A maybe in someone's life, sown at the right time, can sometimes influence their heart even to greater things. It was said of Frank Capra that at a certain time, he didn't take his faith very seriously. And though he was successful, someone said to him, you know what, Mr. Capra, those gifts that you have, they have been given to you by God. And therefore, they're meant to glorify God. And because of that, he then began to reevaluate his Catholic values and his Catholic faith. And he began to realize that he was called to show that God loves everybody and that every single person is called to respond in goodness, loving God and neighbor as self, and even loving one's enemies. So some people will talk about how hammy and hokey It's a Wonderful Life is, but when we look at the values that were in that, we see how good people are called to be, even if sometimes they struggle. So brothers and sisters, we ask the Lord today at this Mass, which is a commissioning, it is not simply a gathering, it is a sending forth, We ask the Lord to give us the apostolic mission that we are called to share in as baptized members of Christ Jesus. That he may give us feet shod to preach the gospel of peace. The gospel of peace in knowing Jesus. Not a peace that is absent of conflict, but a peace that sustains us even as we face opposition in a world that basically wants to be left alone to self-destruct. May God bless us and keep us and continue to pour upon us the apostolic and the evangelistic graces that we ask God to give us today.